wider. And, and now the next thing you're doing, in addition to opening up to where you're selling, um, now into non-comic publishers, but now you're also looking at Comixology going on on other operating system uh, oh. pad combinations, right? And as, as you and I talked about a couple of weeks ago, when we met, it, it looks like there's going to be at least five or six of these platforms coming out uh, over, over the next couple of years. We're, 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 you know, you're pretty excited about that, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's, you know, being in our position, we, we get, you know, we get to see some of these new devices before they're released to the public. And, uh -huh. and I, you know, and I have to say that some of them are, are you know, really nice. And, uh, you know, I... And I, pretty much I like to say that, you know, if, if you can read comics on a microwave, you know, we're going to sell you comics on a microwave. <laughs> and, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, one of, you know, we, a lot of people complain that we force you to create an account before you start buying comics. The whole reason why we have that account is because we allow you to take your collection with you. So you can read it on the web, you can read it on the iPhone, you can read it on the iPad. Um, right. We even let you transfer purchases between apps like so if you buy a DC comic uh, in the com DC comic app you can read it in our app and vice versa right so when we expand to Android and, and these other platforms you're going to be able to take your collection with you you know it's not you're, you're not it's not going to be a situation where if you bought it on the iPhone you can only read it on the iPhone and uh, and but right, vice versa on the Android you know it's like if you buy it on either platform you're going to be able to read it on the other one great great um, and, and talk Finally, you know, back into some technical stuff. Talk about DRM, digital rights management, a little bit, and you know where you see that all playing out for owners of of, uh, of content. Well, the the biggest problem that we've been having with uh, like the Android and, and and all these other devices is, is that they they have external storage. You know, the iPhone, the iPad has internal storage. Um, with these other ones, they have these like you know memory the ability to add memory to it but that what that means is that you can actually take that memory out of the device and put it into your computer you know so it's like you know these you know one of the biggest stumbling blocks that we've had moving to these new devices is that you know we have to come up with a way to protect the content once it's on one of these removable de um, devices uh, the other um, stumbling block that we've had is that you know uh, a lot of these platforms don't have the same in-app purchasing technology that Apple has. Right. Um, you know, I mean, 30% is, is, a, is a lot in some people's mind, but, you know, they build a pretty decent system that no one has yet replicated on any of the other devices. Right, right. Um, it's it's a you know it's almost like the, it's almost like the Spider-Man slogan you know with, with great power <laughs> becomes great responsibility they yeah. they or comes great responsibility they, they they take it seriously which is which is great and, and but they are very rigid in, in the in their approach so I know it's a challenge. Well, it, it has its you know advantages and disadvantages. Um, you know, I mean, you 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 have better protection because of you know these stringent rules but at the same time it's like these stringent rules prevent you know certain things from you know being released which, right you know. um, and uh, someone mentioned recently I think it was in a discussion with you that that uh, in the in the Android store there's some people who are actually uh, taking an app and and owning it and then and then reselling it and so it's not even a store really that it's a pretty much a wild west environment is that your understanding oh. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> what was it, um, Mac MacWorld, I think, uh, or, or one of these websites? They wrote an article about how <laughs> how some of these apps are actually selling better on pirated sites. Sites that you know steal your content and then resell it are selling it better than through the Android app, uh, through the Android store, which wow. is absolutely insane. Right. You know, it's, Go ahead. Oh, it's kind of funny. Um, one of our competitors uh, released. They were first to be on, on the Android doing single comic apps. And, and the Android store has a, a policy where you can get a refund after 24 hours, or within 24 hours, you can get a refund for any app that you purchase. Uh -oh. And yeah, yeah. So what he was finding was that people were downloading the single comics apps and then returning them within 24 hours. So literally stealing their content. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, you know, and, and he, he said, um, he's like, obviously they liked it or they wouldn't download it to all four issues, you know. So, I mean, this is just one of the one of the problems, you know, 
with the Android um, you know environment that I'm hoping that Google is looking at it and looking to improve because I mean these are real considerations. You know? Sure. No, I I think you're you're absolutely right. They're going to have to address it. Probably some third party with some rigor is going to have to step in and, and figure it out, or or Google's going to have to step up their game uh, right. to build a, a more rigorous app store, possibly. Um, so so before uh, before I let you go, what, what is your what is your favorite comic title? I'm gonna put you put you on the spot. I, mean, I, um, I like a lot. Of, I like The Walking Dead, uh-huh. um, which is odd because I don't like zombies. Um, uh-huh. But I, a really good title title is uh, Irredeemable by Boom Studios. Uh-huh. Um, there's a lot of titles that I like that are no longer in print. Like I like Ex Machina. Oh, Invincible from Image Comics is another good one. Uh huh. Uh, I have a, obviously I have a, a, a fondness for the Fantastic Four, uh-huh. um, uh, but yeah, I mean, you know, Captain America. Um, sure. You know. And uh, there's a there's a, a lot of comic book movies are coming out. They're much better these days, right? They've really started to improve. Yeah. Well, you know what would make a really good movie? Um, there's this property from Red Five called Atomic Robo. Um, Unfortunately, it would require a lot of CGI, which is probably why they haven't done it. But I mean, yeah, comic book movies. I, well, you know what? The key, I think, to the comic book movies becoming so much better is that the, the publishers themselves have been getting involved. Right. Like when, Mar- when Marvel actually took over creating the movies based on their characters, right. those movies became so much better. Like, I mean, if you, like if you compare Iron Man to the Ang Lee Hulk movie, I mean, right. it's like night and day. Right. Right, right, because they, they know the backstory and they know how to make it look good. Right. Excellent. Well, um, John, this has been a real pleasure. Thanks so much for taking the time, no and uh, hopefully we'll get to, to hang out again sometime soon. And uh, best of luck with Comixology. Hopefully we'll get you back on the on the podcast in the not-too-distant future. That would be great. All right. Thanks Take care. Lot. Thanks a lot. Okay.